Hello, let's do the New York Times Medium Sudoku for April 25th, 2024. I take a systematic approach to the medium solves in an attempt to aid in learning uh, the important techniques that you should be looking for uh, in order to solve uh, these puzzles quickly and easily every time without uh, computer assistance for things like auto-filling candidates and without going through and filling all the candidates from the start. Uh, you are going to hear from people in the comments sometimes that, oh, I just filled all the candidates and it was easy. Um, we're not necessarily going for, let's just get this puzzle solved. We're going for the journey. We're going for enjoying the solve. And uh, some people find that enjoyable, but I don't find it sustainably enjoyable. Uh, if, if every time you start a puzzle, the first thing you have to do is go through every cell and fill it, or you have to use computer assistance to a huge degree, then um, I would say that you're going to get bored of it pretty quick. Uh, using this method, every puzzle will take you on a journey, and uh, it'll expand your mind uh, in certain ways, at least. <laughs> so I recommend trying this out yourself. Uh, once you get used to the various things and the things that I say to look for, you can start looking for them out of order. You don't have to be as systematic, but I do recommend falling back on the systematic if you get stuck. All right, uh, and so with all that said, uh, I always provide a link in the description to solve the puzzle yourself using the Sudoku Pad uh, web-based software. It is completely free, uh, and I find it um, nicer, especially for this method, uh, nicer than the New York Times built-in solver uh, solving tool. So uh, yeah, with all that said, I'm going to get started now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go band by band, and we're going to we're going to scan bands. Now, just for terminology's sake, this is a cell, this is a row, this is a column, this is a box, and this is a band. A band is a row of three boxes. Also, this is a stack. This is a stack is a column of three boxes. So it doesn't really matter which one you start with, but I like to be systematic, so I don't. If I always do it in the same order, I know I don't forget anything. Um. I think people who are very, uh, very used to this technique would would jump around and try to find the band or stack that looks the most useful to start with. But I think it's perfectly fine for any solve to just go systematically through them because you're going to want to touch them all anyway. Uh, so anyway, let's start with this top band here. We're going to go through the three bands in order, and we're going to look for one, mostly one thing. And then we're going to quickly follow up at the end to see if there's anything else to follow up on. A couple things to look for there, and then we're going to move on to the next band. Sometimes you'll find things, sometimes you won't. But the first thing and most important thing we're looking for are what I call buddies. So that's two of the same digits in the band, um, but not three. Not one, not, not three. Exactly two digits in, in the band. So the easiest, if you think about it, what we want to do is we're going to compare each box against each other, because you can't repeat a digit in a box. So um, there's going to be three comparisons. There's going to be box one against box two. There's going to be box one against box three. And there's going to be box two against box three. And you're going to compare them and you're going to compare the digits in them. And you're going to see if there's any uh, equal uh, uh, two, two of the same digit. So what I recommend doing is starting with a box that has the fewest number of givens and then compare that against the other two. Because if I started with this, I'd have to remember one, four, six, nine and try to compare against the other two. But here I just have to remember two, five. So I remember two, five, and I look at this box and I look at this box looking for a two or a five. I don't find any fives, but I do find a two here. So we have two twos in this band. This box does not have a two. Now, these twos do affect this box, though, because this two says two can't be in these three cells. Even ignoring the givens, it does that. And this two says two can't be in these three cells. And so now we want to look down and see if we see any other twos down here. And we do see this one, and that takes two out of this cell here, including you know, these two again right in this cell. And so now we want to think about where can two still go in this box? And the answer is these two cells only. So this box needs a two, and it's going to end up in this cell or this cell. We want to remember that in some way, and that's what notation is for. Notation is remembering things that you discovered that you think are interesting to remember for later. You could try to keep it all in your head, but I don't recommend it. There's a lot to remember. So what we're going to do is we're going to use corner mark mode for this, and we're going to put two a corner marked two in both of these cells. And what that's going to remind us of is that corner marks tell us that within the box, and it's always box-centric logic, within the box, these are the only two cells that can be two. And one of the big advantages of that is if one of these suddenly cannot be two, then we immediately know that the other one must be two. There are other advantages, but that's the big one. All right, so 
I have compared this box, box one, against two and three. The only thing left is to compare box two against box three. So I pick the one with the least number of givens, the two and seven, and I see if there's a two or seven in here. There's not. So we're done with the buddy scanning. Before we move on, I want you to check for completely full rows within a box. None of these are completely full, so we don't find that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, basically from there you can you can move on. Um, you can also do a quick scan of uh, boxes that are fairly full of givens if you want. So for example, this five looking in, this will be something you start to recognize more as you just get used to it. But this five looking in does limit five to two places in this box. So we are going to mark the five there. Um, I am seeing uh, one more thing that we could do here, but I save that for the next pass around because I don't want, um, I don't think it's worth getting distracted uh, and try to pile too much into this first scan. Um, basically what we're looking for is just when, um, then there's some horizontal logic to be done, if that makes sense. We're not worried too much about the vertical logic, except how maybe it might help sometimes, but we're mostly looking for the horizontal logic and ignoring anything not in the band. And that'll help you focus on the low hanging fruit that the puzzle's giving you. All right, we're moving on to the next band. There is a repeated seven in this band. This seven looks down. So there's a seven in one of these two cells. There are no other buddies. Uh, and there are no filled rows or columns, and I don't see anything else horizontally to do. So let's move on. Uh, I'm going to start with this 258. So the 2 has a buddy. They look in here. We look up here. We see this is a 2 as well. And now we have a hidden single 2 in the box. That, that terminology, let's break it down. Hidden means that it was found via either a row, column, or box. It wasn't found at, at, by looking at the cell itself. It was found by looking at a collection of cells. Uh, that collection being a row, column, or box. That's what hidden means as a prefix. Um, single means that while looking at that, there was only one option. So while looking at the box, in this case, there was only one option. And then what was the option? It was a two. So hidden single two is telling us that within, within in this case, within the box, but within a row, column, or box, there was only one option for where two could go. And then I add in the box at the end to specify that the hidden is focused on the box here. So we focus on this box and we say, well, two can't be in these cells or these cells or this cell because of these twos looking into it. And this nine is filling one of the cells that could have been two. And so there is a hidden single two in, in this box, in box nine, if you prefer. We count the boxes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's kind of a logical left to right, top to bottom order. And so that lets us place the two because we need a two in the box and there's only one place for it. Whenever you have a single, that means we're going to be placing a digit. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so that was the duplicate two. You can see it got us a digit, which is very nice. The five also has a duplicate. They look in here. We do not have any fives up here. So we're going to put a five in one of these two. But this should trigger something in your head. Now, this is one of the hardest things to see, but if you look for it every time you place two, uh, a digit in two places in a box, you're going to have a much easier time finding it. Now, what am I talking about? Well, I look up and I see that I also have fives corner marked up in this box here, box two. And what I notice is that neither of them have a five corner marked in one of the columns. People call this lining up, right? These fives line up between box two and box eight. This box and this box. The fives line up. You can see that, you know, one of them will be in column four and one of them will be in column six because neither of them can, can have a five in column five. So the question you want to ask then is where does the five go in column five? And the answer is, well, not in box two and not in box eight. So it must be. It, the column's going to need a five. It, it's going to be in box five. So we can put a corner marked five in these three cells. And this does what's called claiming. Here's, how, here's the logic for claiming. This column needs a five. It's only in one of these three cells. So it will be in one of these three cells. We don't know which, but the final solution, if you were to go and look at the solution to this puzzle right now, the five would be in one of these three, guaranteed, 100%. Logical. We're not guessing. Well, if it ends up in one of these three, the box doesn't have another five, so it's not going to end up in any of these six cells. 
basically it the the column has claimed the box and that's why it's called claiming column says i claim the five you don't these other columns can't have a five in this box because i claim it and this corner mark is is reminding us of it and it means the same thing it means five will end up in one of these three in the box and since it'll end up in one of these three in the box we shouldn't consider five for any of these cells hopefully that is clear it's one of the more difficult things to understand i think but uh but go over my explanation again uh if you're confused all right so the lining up finds us either claiming or a hidden single in the column. If, the, if these two were filled with digits or if we had fives over here or something, and let's say five could only have been here in the column, then that would be a hidden single five in the column and we could place it. Okay, so that was the five. Very nice. Good follow up on that. Uh, nobody for the eight, so we don't really have to worry about it. Um, now we're going to compare these two against each other, the one, two, and six. Uh, we already have the twos done, right? The one and the six, we don't have anything. Um, but I'm quickly seeing that the one looking in here does restrict one to one of these two cells. So it's worth just corner marking that to remind us. Uh, it doesn't really have a knock-on effect on this box, though. So nothing really to do there. You can see that the six can't be here also, but there's, there's still three places for six. So anyway, so uh, now we look for filled rows. None of these rows are filled. This column is filled. We'll do that when we do a vertical scan. But none of these rows are filled. So. Nothing new there. When we get to at least when we get to this filled column, I'll tell you what I mean for what to look for there. All right. So now let's move on. Uh, we're doing this stack now. All right. So the other thing that I want you to look for um, when you're scanning these bands, but right before you move on, is any row or box in that band that is down to four or fewer digits. So uh, we didn't have that up here. We didn't have that up here. Uh, and but down here, there is a single box here that is down to four digits. Everything, none of the rows are. But what you want to do is you want to think about what those three, what those digits are. So let's think about this box. We need a one. We have the two, three, four, five. So we need a one. We need a six, seven, and eight. It's going to be four digits. One, six, seven, eight in this case. What we're looking for is we're looking for any of one, six, seven, eight that's, uh, that might be looking in to restrict us. And I see that we have this one that we already found, and we have this seven looking down as well. So seven's in one of these two cells. Now, any cell that you find is down to three or fewer possible digits, I would use center marks to mark that. Three or fewer, not four. Don't, don't bother with four. It's just going to clutter your grid, and it's never going to be useful until near the end of the puzzle. You can always mark it again later if it goes down to three. Um, so this cell, for example, we know isn't the one or the seven. So it's the only, it's all just the two other digits that we mentioned. It's the six and the eight. So this cell is only six, eight. And if you look, our center marks here are, you know how our corner marks were centric to the box? Our center marks are cell centric. It's telling you something about the cell. It's telling you that in the final solution, if we looked at the final solution, I guarantee you this cell is either a six or an eight because it cannot be a one. It cannot be a two, three, four, five, seven or nine it simply can't it would break sudoku rules to repeat that digit in either a row column or box and so this cell will be a six or an eight and we can do more logic later that could eliminate the six or eight it might be something simple like placing a six or eight in the column or the row uh, or the box or it could be something a little more complex uh, like pointing or claiming but at some point this will be reduced to only a six or an eight or we'll get a hidden single six or eight in the box and that will, that will make this a single. Um, but we'll go over that when it happens. Now, these two cells also, we know this one can't be one because of our one corner marks, right? It sees a one. So this is down to uh, six, seven, eight. This one can't be seven, so it's one, six, eight. It's not an eight either because there's an eight in the row. And then this one can't be six, so this is one, seven, eight. And so all of these ended up down to three or less, and that's going to be helpful for later to have these center marked but only if it's three or fewer candidates. We call these candidates because a six is a candidate for the cell, eight is a candidate for the cell to be the, the, the digit that's in the final solution. All right, now we can move on from this band. And now we're gonna do stacks. We're gonna do the exact same thing for stacks. So this two and five, we do have buddies down here. So let's do the two first. The twos look in, there's a two in one of these two. And the fives look in, so there's a five in one of these two. Now we compare these two against each other. Uh, and it's the eight, just two and five we already took care of. There is a there is a doubled up eight. Eight has a buddy, so eight ends up in one of these three. 
Now we only corner mark a box if it's three or fewer places. Uh, we always mark it if it's two. If it's three, we only mark it if it's in a line like this. But whenever you find buddies, they will end up in a line like this. So it's always viable to, it's always, you always can just go to, and corner mark it. All right, what else do we look for when we do, before we move on? Well, the first thing we look for is filled columns or filled boxes, none of those. And we also look for rows, or sorry, columns or boxes that are down to four or fewer. This column is down to four. So we're gonna think about what it needs. It needs a one, three, four, and six. This cell can't be one or four, so we can put three, six in the center. This one can't be one, so this is three, four, six. This one can't be one, and now we're, I'm, this should trigger you. Like you're like, th this one couldn't be one, this one couldn't be one, and this one couldn't be one. Immediately I'm going, okay, I'm just gonna place the one. There is a hidden single one in this column. Do you see it? Hidden single one in the column. Because one cannot go in any of these cells. We have this one here, this one here, which takes it out of that cell, and this one here, which takes it out of that cell. So hidden single one in column three is placed right here. Now let's follow up on that one for a second here. It, it prevents this cell from being one, which means we can remove the corner mark and the center mark, one. And when we remove a corner mark, we want to search the box for how many corner marks are remaining. In this case, there is only one one corner mark remaining. So we found a hidden single one in box nine, a hidden single one in the box. Um, we are left with this six, seven, eight, which is not resolved. Um, the ones in, the, in wh whenever we place a digit, we want to rescan anything that we've already done. So we've already done this band. So we wanted to rescan the band. We're rescanning for everything we were looking for in that band. So for example, this, this row now is down to four digits. So we want to scan that. We want to think about what those four digits are. It is the four, six, seven, and nine. I'm noticing the six is not in one of these two cells. So the six is actually in one of these two, and that's going to claim the box. Um, and we know that the six is in one of these two in this box, if you just look. But also what that tells us is that in this row now, the six is, is only in one of these two, because this, this box has it in this row, and this box has it in this row, right? So we need a six in this row. Okay. So we can mark the sixes. What else did we have? So these are worth center marking just because we know they aren't six. So we needed the four, seven, and nine. This one can't be seven because of the column. Uh, so these are four, six, seven, nine. I'm not seeing any of four, six, seven, nine up here. So we can't further restrict that. So we're not going to mark them. Okay, so is there anything else to follow up in this band? Um, we did get a filled row here. So let's talk about what to do with that. What we want to do is, because this row is filled in the box, we want to look at the two rows that are not the filled one, and we want to see how that affects the box. So first of all, not, we only care about the, the digits. We also only care, we don't care about digits that are already in the box. One's already in the box, so is two, five, six is not. So if, if we hadn't already found it through this row, we would have found it now that the six looks into here, and we know these aren't six, and the box still needs a six, and so six ends up in one of these two. And that would do something called pointing that would remove six from here and put the six in one of these two. So we found it in a different way. There's always a different way to find it. Um, almost always. Uh, I would say pretty much always. Um, so pointing is like claiming. So I'll just go over that now since I used the term. And it's kind of one of the last things to, that, other than hidden pairs and triples, naked pairs and triples. We haven't had those yet. But the way to think about pointing is very similar to claiming. This box needs a six. It's going to end up in one of these two cells. Those two cells are in the same row. So no matter where the six ends up in the final solution, it will be in this row, which means the row can't have another six. So we cannot put six in any of the remaining cells of the row. It removes the six from these six cells that are outside the box, but the same row. And you can see that that removes six from this cell here. So let's actually go back and look at this cell because the column is telling us we need three, four, and six, but we have the four here. And we have either the claiming sixes or the pointing sixes, pick your, take your pick, which tells us this can't be six either. So if this is not four or six, and it needs to be either three, four, or six, that leaves only three. And this is what's called a naked single three, because if we were to look at every single candidate that this cell could be, it cannot be one, two, it could be three, it can't be four, five, it can't be six, it can't be seven, eight, or nine. 
So the only possible valid digit I can put in here is three, and so I must. And that's called a naked technique because it's it's uh, it, when it's cell centric like this. When we're looking at the center marks, we call that a naked technique, and that places the three in here. Now that removes three from this cell here, and that makes it a naked six. And that removes three and six from here. The three and the six removed. That makes this a naked four. Now technically, some people call this a full house because we have eight of the nine digits placed in it, a house is just a generic term for row, call, or box. So they call it a full house, nothing to do with poker, because there's only one digit left, so we just place it. And because it's not really a naked, it is a naked single, but it's also a hidden single, but also it's much more trivial than that. It's the first thing that you should be doing, which is if there's a completely full row or column or box other than one digit, just place that digit. And in that case, uh, we are placing the, I forget what the digit was, a four, okay. Now we want to follow up because we are already done horizontal scans here and here and here. We want to follow up on them. I'll just go top to bottom. So we got this six. It has a buddy. There's also this six here. So we can corner mark sixes here. Um, it did remove, it did make this row down to four. So let's follow up on that. We need the three, five, eight, and nine. Um, this one's not three or nine. So this is five, eight. Um, this one is not a nine, so three, five, eight. This one's not an eight or a five. In fact, neither of these are five. So these are from, this is three, nine. And this one can be three, three, eight, nine. Okay, so we got that penciled. And when we pencil these, we're looking, we're scanning the row, column, and box to see if there's anything that matches. And I don't see anything that matches, so we're fine. Or we don't find anything there. Um, I don't think this has any other follow-up that we need to do. So we're gonna then look at this four, see if there's follow-up for that. There's nothing in the um, there's nothing in the band that I would follow up with here. No buddies, um, and it didn't make a row. It made it made this box though. It made this box down to four digits, so we can we can pencil this now. And we know this one's not five, and this one's not two, so they're just worth penciling. I'm just gonna pencil the four digits and clean it up. So we need the two, the three, the five, and the six. We know these aren't five; these aren't two. We also see this six looks at making this not a six. Okay. I don't see anything immediate to do with those. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow up on this three now. It does have a buddy. We get a three in one of these two cells. Now this is the next thing to trigger. When you place corner marks, we found a hidden pair in box eight. It's a hidden three, five pair in box eight, if you want to get specific. So what do I mean by that? Hidden means that we're using box-centric logic in this case, because we're using the box. It could have been the row or column, but I, I'm, I'm deciding to do it with the box. So we are using box-centric logic. It's a hidden. It's a pair. What's a pair? A pair is when two cells have been reduced to only two poss the same two possible digits. In this case, three and five I've specified. So let's go over this. In this box, the three is limited to these two cells. But also, these corner marks are telling us that, the, that those two cells are also limited to five. The, both the three and the five are limited to the same two cells. We need two cells for the three and the five. This box will have a three, it will have a five, and they will occupy two of the cells in the box. Well, these are the only two cells they can occupy. And so what that means is that we must place the three and five in some order into these cells. It'll either be three, five like this, or it'll be five, three like this, but those are the two options. There is no other option. There's no option three. Those are the two options. And so we cannot put anything other than threes or fives into these cells, which means we can convert those corner marks to center marks. Now, what's the consequence? Well, it was a hidden pair. And the consequence of hidden techniques is removing anything else that could have been in those cells. So these are now down to three fives. So what we want to do is we want to think about what were the digits that got removed from these two cells that normally could have been in them. Uh, not the one, two, three. Uh, they could have been four. So we want to think about four in this box. And what I discover is that I have this four looking in here, and we know these aren't four anymore. And so that puts the four in one of these two cells. Well, those fours point. Remember pointing? It's going to be here or here. So it's not here. Fours point in. And we don't have any fours up here, so four ends up in one of these two. Okay, what else other than four? Uh, and also I'm scanning up here to see if we... We had a matching force, but we already have a four in this column, so it's not important. Um, the five is is in one of these two. We don't need to worry about that. The six was not removed. It could have couldn't already couldn't have been there. How about the seven? Well, seven was removed from this cell, 
And we can notice now that this 7 looking in also does mean that 7's in one of these two cells. We would have seen that from a vertical scan, but this can't be 7 anymore, which might be interesting. Uh, 8 was also removed. We have this 8 looking in, and now none of these can be 8. And so 8 ends up in one of these two cells. Well, that's extremely powerful because now where does the uh, these 8s point into this box? We cannot actually make these cells 8 because if we did, there would be nowhere to put 8 in this box because this hidden 3-5 pair removed the possibility of these being 8. That's why it's so important to go through each digit that got removed when you find a hidden pair. And so if these can't be 8, well, this can now only be 6. It resolves this entire triple. This is 6, this is 7, this is 8. Now we got to follow up on all these. First of all, this 7 removes this corner mark 7, placing this 7. I'm doing the low-hanging fruit first. This 7 corner mark was removed. We just placed it. Remember, this can't be 7 anymore. And so now this is the only place for 7 in the box. Hidden single 7 in box 8. Hidden single 4 in the box. All right, and now, now the, the last follow-up for this box is just... Let's just fill in the candidates for, for the remaining open cells because they're all pairs. This is a pair for the row. This is a pair. This is a pair. Okay. So other than 8, what do we have here? Uh, we have not yet found the 9. So this is 8, 9. Uh, I am going to follow up up here in a second. I just noticed that. Um, I can only do one thing at once, unfortunately. This is 6, 7. And then this is uh, uh, not 2. This is 4, 7. Okay. None of them are resolved, but we can think of this band as done now. By done, I mean there's nothing, we don't need to scan horizontally anymore because we're just down to horizontal pairs. And since we're only down to horizontal pairs, they're not going to resolve themselves. Something external is going to come in and resolve it at some point, and that'll be nice and easy. We'll be able to easily see that. We don't need to horizontally scan this band anymore. All right, with this placing the six also removed this six corner marks. So we can place that six. Now, we need to make sure we don't forget everything that we placed. So we did place the 7. We want to check horizontally for the 7. We do have two, two, three sevens now, so nothing really to follow up there. This 6, we have three sixes now, not much to follow up there. We haven't done these verticals yet. Remember, we were still on this vertical, and we managed to finish this band because of it. So I believe that's all the follow-ups. If I miss something, I apologize. We'll get there. Uh, now I'm going to do this stack. So look for, look for duplicate sevens. We actually have one. And that places the 7 here. Now follow up horizontally. We have these two 7s looking in. Puts a 7 down here. It also reduced this box to 4 or fewer. So let's look at it. We need the 2, 3, 5, and 8. This one's not 2, so this is 3, 5, 8. Neither of these are 5, so this, these are 2, 3, 8. Both of them. Okay. Not super exciting, but they are down to 3. Um... I don't think anything else to do in this. I don't think there's anything else to do in this band to follow up. Uh, so let's keep looking at this stack. We did the seven. Now we just compare these two boxes to each other. Uh, I'm just going to pick this one, two, four, six, seven. So the one has a buddy. Let's do one at a time. This is a hidden single one in the box. Follow up on it. There's a one in one of these two cells. Actually, the one is placed in this box. I didn't notice that one. The uh, we might as well follow up on this one here and just put one in one of these two. We didn't have to because we hadn't done that vertical scan yet, but I felt like it. Um, it was an instinct. Uh, anyway, um, so we got the one. Um, it doesn't reduce a row, column, or box to four or fewer. Uh, so what about the two? Nope. The four. The four does have a buddy. We have this four in as well. So four is in one of these two. The six does have a buddy as well. The six looks in like this, six and one of these two. This is this does not trigger anything. This is not a hidden pair or a triple or anything. It's because they're two spread out, three cells instead of two. Uh, and then the seven, we already finished the sevens. Okay. So that vertical scan, I think, okay, this is down to a triple though. This whole column is filled except these three. It's going to be a very useful triple. So what's, what's remaining? We need the three, the five, and the uh, eight. This one's not eight. Now this 358, what is that telling us? That's telling us, is you can think of it as three claims, right? Claiming threes, claiming fives, and claiming eights. We can also just think of it as a, a naked triple if you want. So naked, meaning we're looking at the center marks. Uh, and triple, it's a 358 triple. Triple meaning we have three cells where that have been reduced to the same three center marks. The three, five, and eight. It doesn't matter that this can't be eight. If you take them as a whole, and you, and you just account for every digit that is center marked. We have the 3, the 5, and the 8. There's no 1, there's no 2, there's no 4, there's no... Right? You get what I mean? 
it's down to three, five, and eight. That is three digits that have been accounted that in three cells. I have highlighted three cells. They all have to be different from each other because they share a column. The important thing is they have to be different from each other for whatever reason, mostly because they share a row, column, or box. They, in this case, they share the column and the box. For that reason, they have to be different. And because they have to be different, there are three different values that go in those cells. And the only three values that can go in those cells are three, five, and eight. That means that no matter, I don't know how this is going to resolve. Maybe it'll resolve like three, five, eight. Not like that, probably. <laughs> uh, maybe three, eight, five, right? Maybe eight, five, three. There's, there's a few ways this can resolve, but the, it'll, it'll always end up being a three, five, and eight in this box or in these three cells. So that means that these four cells are not three, five, eight anymore. So what are they? It's down to four. So let's think about it. We know this one's not the four or six from our corner marks. So this is only the two or the nine. And the, these, this one's not four. So this is two, six, nine. And this one's not six so or nine. So this is two, four. This can, I think this can be any of two, four, six, nine. So I'm not going to mark it. But yeah, so you see how this triple was useful to reduce this box, uh, what's possible in this box. Okay. We have now, um, I, we've now finished scanning this uh, stack. So now let's scan this stack. Uh, I'm going to start with this box, the two, six, seven. So two does have a buddy. Two's in one of these two. Uh, the six also has a buddy, but it has two of them, so we don't care. And the seven's also done. Here, the one is the only digit we haven't mentioned yet. So two ones look up. We already got that. This is when we would have. We didn't already. Any filled any filled columns? Yes, all of these are filled. Um, so th that's not helpful because the box is done. Uh, it's really only helpful if the box is not done yet. Uh, it means that we already found all the buddies that we could have found. Um, no other verticals are filled. This is this uh, column though is down to three three digits, so we can just fill them. We know the one is up here, not here. Um, we have the two, we need the three, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, we need a nine. And this one's not nine because of that nine there. Uh, I'm not seeing anything immediate to do with these. Okay. This column is down to four digits. We think about it because it's four digits. We know this one's not the two though. Uh, but what are the digits? They are two, four, five, eight. This one's not four. So this is two, five, eight. This is any of two, four, five, eight. This one's not two, so it's four, five, eight. Okay. Unfortunately, we haven't really been finding much. For, we have almost the whole puzzle penciled. <laughs> um, but we're still being stingy on what we pencil. All right. Anything else vertically to do here? No. Okay. So uh, we have gone through the entire pass on bands and stacks. Maybe we missed something. Maybe we didn't. But we're going to move on to the next phase. The next phase that I want you to do is to look at boxes individually. And there's some more subtle things that we can do with them uh, to make sure that we didn't miss any restrictions in a box. And we're only going to do that for boxes that we don't have fully marked up already. But we might we might take a quick look at those to make sure we didn't miss anything obvious. Um, and I just noticed something. Uh, so let's go back. This is something I should have seen when when this three when I put placed the three five eight. I got very distracted explaining the naked triple, but when I placed this three five eight, it did have a matching three five. So let's go back and and, and pretend that we actually noticed that before we do the box centric stuff because this might be very helpful. So this is a naked three five pair. Remember I explained the naked three five eight. This is a naked three five. One of these cells will be three. One of these cells will be five. Just looking at the center marks, that will be true. Because three and five are the only options and they have to be different from each other. So if that's the case, that means the rest of the row can't be three, five. And that leaves only two and four for the row. This cell can't be two. So this is a naked single four. Because if I put two, three, five, four, five, these are these are the possible digits for the row. We know it's not two because of the column. And this three, five pair removes three and five from it, making this a naked single four. Alternatively, uh, th that'll make this a naked single four and this a naked single two. It'll resolve these. You can probably see that. But another way you could have seen that is in this row, where does two go? Well, these, uh, this two here takes it out of this cell. Um, this two here takes it out of this cell, and this two takes it out of this cell. So we had a hidden single two in the row. You will always notice that the combination of nakeds and hiddens for a row column or box will add up to the number of empty cells. So in this case, we had a um, 
a hit in single two, which gives us a hit in single four. Sorry, hit in single two gives us a hit in single four, and that leaves a, a naked single, a naked pair three five. Or you can think of this as a hit in two four pair if you want, but it's going to add to four. So anyway, this is the four, this is the two, however you want to see it. That two resolves this nine, which resolves the six, which then places the four. Notice there's only one place for four left in the box. That places the two in this box because this can't be two anymore. We're just following a lot of our markings here. These can't be six anymore. And now I notice that we have a three five pair in this box, or alternatively, a hidden six in the box. Uh, but either way, that makes this two and six. This is now a three. We get the one and the nine resolved. Uh, this nine resolves the eight and nine. I'm just resolving what I can here. Uh, this six resolves this, the nine and the six. Uh, the nine resolves this three. That makes this a naked single five, makes this a naked single eight, five and four. That resolves the three five over here. This is now a, a full house, right? That's a nine. This is not a five anymore. We get the three, eight and five triple resolved. This is three and five. So really that three five pair is what we needed. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I went back and saw that. So we don't need to scan the boxes again. This is this two, this corner mark two tells us that's two. And now I'm just going to look at rows, columns, boxes that are down to the fewest number of open cells. We're just going to focus on those. This puzzle's done. Look at how many givens we've got, or how many digits we have placed. Uh, we need the 8 and the 9. That goes like this, because we have this 8 9 over here. Here we need the 3 and the 5. This 5 tells us the order. That resolves this 3, 8. That resolves this 8 and 7, based on our corner marks. Resolves the 4 and 7. Up here we need 1 and 4, and we're done. So. Had we been a little bit more careful, our first pass of scanning would have finished the puzzle. Because when I got this 358 triple, I did not notice we made a 35 pair here as well. And that's why following up is so important. Um, everyone misses a follow up. <laughs> uh, but the more follow ups you, you get, the, the faster you're going to solve the puzzle. And you're not going to have to revisit anything. I would have eventually seen it when I revisited this box, probably. But yeah, that was a, an important spot. And hidden singles in rows and columns are often the hardest to spot. So anything you can do to help yourself spot those, the better. Okay, so that was the puzzle. Uh, I think the recap is um, that our, our systematic technique and the order that we look for things, going through all the bands, going through all the stacks, and the things we're specifically looking for solved this puzzle. Uh, that, that's the conclusion. Uh, if you were stuck, you may have been stuck on this 3-5 pair, but there may have also been just something I found during my normal scan, such as pointing or claiming. There was a lot of that going on in this puzzle, a lot of pointing, a lot of claiming. That may have also uh, been something that you missed. So uh, let me know what if you did get stuck, if you used this video to get unstuck, what was it that you missed? Um, let me know how you did on the puzzle in general. And if you enjoyed this, why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.